So Viking is uh, obviously a great and a family owned company. How, what are those values that made you through time succeed? Well, I, I didn't have much choice in the matter. Uh, the, surprising enough, this is my 49th Miami Boat Show. I started coming at 13 years old. My father just basically, when I was in high school, became a freshman, said, you're going to the boat show and you're gonna learn about boat building. And so that's where it all started and it was the same in building the boat. I was in the plant when I was 12, 13 years old. My father would take me on the weekends and any holidays where the plant was open and school was closed, I would be in the plant building boats. So I've been raised a boat builder. That's the only thing I know what to do is build boats. And the greatest thing about that is the team that we have assembled over the years. And they're all like me, started in their 20s, building boats, designing boats, being part of the team. And now here we are on our 100th project. You have a strong DNA, obviously. I mean, boating is just, it runs in your veins, right? Yes. How do you keep that DNA with all, you know, the innovations and the changes that come with, obviously, time? Believe it or not, it's a simple question for me because I love doing two things in life, building boats and going fishing. And if you don't build the badass boat that we build and go and take it around the world to go fishing, then you're not doing your job. So they're the only two things that I have a complete focus on, our team focuses on, and that's why we build the boat that we build today and why it is the best in the industry is because of how hard we fish and we take everything that we learn and everything that we experience from talking to a tremendous amount of good captains, good mates, and we apply those to building a better boat every day. I'll be in Costa Rica and I'll start fishing in the Los Sueños Leg 2 tournament, which is one of the best bill fishing tournaments in the world and one of the most competitive tournaments in the world. They call me Left Flat Pat because I fish right on that left flat. And, uh, and that's, where, that's, that's what they call me. And you get so zoned in and you're, you see all the other boats out fishing. And there you're starting to look at things and you get focused on. And what the, the greatest thing is being there with all the, our customers, all of all the captains, all of the mates, and you know, inevitably you sit on a dock box at night, and you're having a beer, and you're going over your day, what happened, how this, what, happened, and you get little nuggets, and you take those little ideas, and then they blossom into something that makes the boat more efficient and better to use, chasing the pelagic fish. After the pandemic, a lot of people said that there's been a shift in boating. What we've noticed in, uh, since Nova, uh, March of 2020, it became a very much a family-oriented event. And boating became, because of its being able to self-contain a family on a boat and go have fun and go over and see, go fishing, go cruising, whatever it is. But you could put everything on the boat, you could go do this for eight hours, you could go do it for a weekend, anchor out, and you were in your bubble. And without question, it brought a lot of people back into the industry that left because of the, the Great Recession in 2008 and 2009. Can we talk about what you have here and also when it comes to stepped hulls? I know that's, that's a, a great new thing that a lot of people are like, oh, but there is vantages in that. 100%, and basically our stepped hulls are in our Valhalla brand and the outboard brand. And, and the biggest key to a stepped hull gives you performance, gives you better visibility, and with that, you need to have safety. Because if you do a stepped hull, and if you go into a hard turn, you could, the hull could grab. As we partnered with Michael Peters, and Michael Peters design, he has a patented tunnel behind the steps. And that tunnel allows that boat to lock in and allows you to turn at high rates of speed without it just locking. And, and that makes a huge difference. Michael has done a few inboard boats 
with uh, with stepped hulls, but we love what we've done here in our design over these last 20 years in our Viking since 19, actually 25 years, since 1997 when we came with our 55 footer that became an icon boat in the industry and really launched us to the next level of boat building and design and engineering. It really, really did. We're designing everything virtually and we're doing all of our sea trials virtually. And the neat thing about it is on a, any given weekend in New Gretna, we're running seven to eight sea trials on anything that we call cooking. Well, what are we cooking this weekend? And because what they do is they, the, the trials last for about 36 hours. So it just goes around the clock, 36 hours, and each thing, the bottoms are tweaked a little bit differently here and there, and, and they just run. Here we have a 90 footer that was 92 feet, uh, but because of SCR, SCR Selective Catalytic Reduction. That was implemented for boats over 24 meters. Our 92 was over 24 meters. We did not want to subject our customers to have to have a, a scrubber system in their boat. So we redesigned the boat and got it under 24 meters. And doing that, we took 18 inches out of the beam and we took two and a half feet out of the overall length of the boat. With doing that, we've got, we increased the performance by 25%. And it's a phenomenal. Now we're cruising, this boat's cruising at 32, 33 knots topping out at 38 plus knots. We've seen as high as 40.3 knots on this boat with 50% fuel in it. So it's been a tremendous, and that's all through the virtual tank testing that we're doing and the design that we're doing today. I know uh, center consoles are a big thing and there's a lot of advantages, not only when it comes to the aft and the boat cockpit, but also when it comes to just the availability of fishing, 360 degrees, right? Sonars, we can take and, and find a fish anywhere and upwards of 1,500 feet out. And we can you can have them down at um, 100 feet and you can split the screen and you can have it's, it's doing two things. It's an omnidirectional sonar. So once the, what was called a spotlight sonar was used for 25 years. And the spotlight sonar was no different than when you would see a, a boat, a target in a movie where you would get a target, the target would disappear and you'd hear a ping and then the sweep would go around and you'd find, yeah, the ping would come back up. Now the target stays on the screen the entire time. So you can intercept the fish and you can judge what way it's moving and then you can intercept it and get your baits right in front of the fish to get the bite. The great thing about the fish that we catch, we release them all. So we, we, it's not like we're hurting the populace of the fish. What we're doing is we're getting and releasing them, and we release them very, very well. What does it feel like when people think fishing boats, they just think Viking? There's nothing else, they just think Viking. It feels of what we're doing, we're doing our job right, and we're accomplishing what our mission statement is and what we're doing, and that what it, that enables us to do is build a better company. Well, we set the standard of boat building. We set the standard in design, we set the standard in engineering, and then everybody else follows. If you're not moving forward, you're going backwards. We will not go backwards.